Well, first of all, a leader alone cannot create a culture that fosters diversity. And so the first prerequisite, I think, is to recognise that addressing organisational culture is an adaptive challenge and not a technical one. So the biggest danger would be to try for a simple technical solution. Uh, and what that does is build up frustration. I think it's much easier in a greenfields um, situation, such as a small entrepreneurial startup, where there are not many people involved to have everyone engaged and to be considering what it means to foster diversity and what that would look like in practice, as well as in the, in the rhetoric of it. It's much more difficult in larger organisations because of the size and because of the complexity of getting everybody involved. But the first aspect of an adaptive challenge is to recognise what the markers are that suggest um, that this is an adaptive challenge. So looking at the differences between the values that are espoused and the values that are enacted um, in everyday life. How do we really treat people around here? What do we say about diversity? Um, and how do people who are different from us in any way, whether it's um, gender, ethnicity, uh, religion, um, uh, sexual orientation, uh, how are they treated? So identifying some of those um, disjunctures I think is a really, uh, the first place to start, really critical. Uh, and then it's about um, wh what a leader can do is facilitate the conversations, having the right people in the room. So these are often very challenging conversations, very difficult to facilitate. Uh, leaders have to recognise um, how much challenge can be coped with and, and still be constructive uh, and when to, when to lower the heat and, and engage in future conversations at other times. So it's a very large challenge uh, and I think it's one that many organisations are facing. I think that is really challenging, the, the sense of how, how do people that are doing things well in their mind well how do you say to them actually the workforce isn't as diverse as it should be it's not as representative as it ought to be and so how do you bring others into an to an organizational structure that probably is oriented one way rather than for all uh, so it's about being open to the challenge articulating the challenge, getting everyone to be working on the problem so that it's not about just you from on high dictating down we're going to have more of this and less of that um, and being prepared to change systems and structures as well as challenge some leaders, you know, line leaders who probably don't want to affect the change that you're trying to drive. So it's multifaceted, it's up and down the organisation and it's probably an incredibly challenging thing to do. So even just getting more women into the workforce is challenging, let alone being more tolerant of having people who don't look like us in the workforce who where English might be a second language and those sorts of things. Culture is a very interesting concept and uh, it's a concept that's getting more attention I might say, you know, culture, conduct, regulators are starting to look at these issues. And the hard-headed economic uh, rationalists would say what's important is the balance sheet, you know, and the P&L. Um, but even they, these days, are starting to understand the importance of culture. And for me, the best indicator of a good culture in a company is whether or not a company does embrace diversity and inclusion, because if they don't embrace those two concepts, actually the culture generally is not very healthy. So that, that is the culture piece, you've got to do it, and boards are responsible for that, leading the organisation as are CEOs and executive teams. Uh, so how do you do it? You have to do some pretty practical stuff. So you've got to have a framework for establishing a, a good culture. So if we look at diversity and inclusion, um, the framework for that is really, I think, comprised of three components. Firstly, you know, there is, there's the issue of leadership. You don't get anything done if the leader doesn't lead on that issue. So if the leader says, I believe in uh, diversity and I believe in inclusion, but everything they do suggests to the contrary, you won't achieve a thing. So you've got to have a leader who manifestly walks the talk, so they actually do in their acts, in their recruitment, in the way they conduct themselves with performance reviews, remuneration reviews, respect diversity, whether it's gender diversity, ethnicity, whatever. So leadership's really important. The second piece is focus. So leaders should be looking at their organisations and saying, well, 
in the diversity and inclusion space, where are our shortfalls? Where are we not achieving? So identifying very precisely with what, where those shortfalls are and what needs to be done to achieve uh, improvement against each of those. And the final piece is probably the most important piece in a way, um, and that is accountability. So once you say, this is what we have to do, this is you know, the shortfall areas, this is what we'll do to eliminate those shortfalls, you've got to hold people accountable. And you've got to report transparently against your results. Now, if you had those components, um, you would have much more success in uh, having cultures of diversity and inclusion. I mean, these sim simply aren't rocket science, to be honest. Those three components that comprise that framework you use for any business initiative you want to achieve. It really is just taking a strategic approach to it. So when I say to people, this is easy, um, I say it's easy to express. <laughs> it's not so easy to implement because, particularly in large organisations, the accountability piece is tough. And often if you look at organisations, you'll find a lot of initiatives found on the rock of accountability in those middle ranks. So there's almost um, sometimes uh, passive resistance, uh, sometimes very active resistance, but if you can't drive down that accountability, you won't achieve. So it's, it's easy to say it's a framing that has got you know, commonality across all sorts of business objectives, but it requires a lot of discipline um, and resilience and stick-addedness uh, to achieve it.